Hey there, Pro Church Media community, this is Jason again, and in this super fun tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to create this kind of dissolving, dusty, blowing into the wind, breaking apart, whatever you want to call it, type of look where we're basically going to take a photo and make it look like it's just dissolving into the winds of oblivion. That actually sounds pretty good, so I'm going to go with that. Anyway, we're going to be looking at a couple different techniques and strategies on how to pull off this type of look, which would actually be really useful in a lot of different applications. So I think you're going to learn a lot. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let's just dive right into it. Okay, so we're going to start with a new document. I'm just going to create it 1920 by 1080. And I'm going to be using a photo that I got from Unsplash. And if you're looking for great photos, be sure to visit prochurchmedia.com slash freechurchphotos. You're going to find a bunch of hand-picked, curated collections that are going to be great for all of your projects. No matter what you're looking for, there's all types of things like women's ministry, men's ministry, baptism, church events, all kinds of stuff you can find there. And all the stuff on Unsplash is free to use for whatever you want, so you really have nothing to lose by going and looking at it. So we're adding new stuff all the time. Be sure to check it out on a regular basis, and you're going to find great stuff for all your projects. ProChurchMedia.com slash freechurchphotos. All right, so the photo that I'm going to be using for this is one um, that I picked specifically just because um, it's uh, very in focus in the foreground and very out of focus in the background. That's going to really help to kind of pull everything together. You could probably do this without that, but um, it's going to make it a lot easier as we go forward. So um, I looked specifically for a picture like that, and so you might want to start with something like that. All right, so the first thing we want to do is isolate this hand and the phone from the background. There's a couple different ways you can do that in Photoshop. You could use like the quick selection tool um, if you want to, and you know just kind of start selecting around um, the foreground, and it will you know start to select it pretty well. But there's also another feature that's pretty new in Photoshop. If you go to Select and then Subject, it's going to look for all the pixels that are in focus and try to select them all. And you can see it did a pretty good job of actually isolating everything. And we just need to go in a little bit and fix some of the problem areas. Like we need to you know, get that hand down there at the bottom. Uh, maybe get rid of that just a little bit. Uh, select that. And it doesn't actually have to be perfect, but it, do, it it's good to always get it as close as you can get it. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of time to clean this up just a bit. Like I missed this button completely over here to get rid of some of the edge there. Something like that. Looks, eh, and I just messed it up. There we go. And so I'm just trying to get as clean of an edge as I can, just so I don't have to worry about that as we're going forward. I think that's looking pretty good. Got a little too much there. And if you need to get rid of some of them, just hold alternate and it'll deselect. And so that's how you do that. I think we're getting close. I just kind of want this edge to be kind of as straight as possible. Yeah, that's better. I think I'll leave that gap there because we're not even going to be dealing with that. I think that will be pretty good. So sometimes when you do uh, your selection or have it automatically do a selection, it tends to want to smooth out a lot of the pixels and a lot of the selection. So you can get these really soft edges, which sometimes works well, but for what I'm doing, I don't really want totally soft edges. So I'm gonna to go to Select and Mask. And maybe I'll choose a different view, like uh, Onion Skin. I guess it's already on Onion Skin. You can see some problem areas. Part of that's because um, it's smoothing it a bit. And just some of the other things, like you can choose how much contrast you have, um, things like that. And um, if you have your shift edge too much on, you might have these kind of haloing areas. So I'm just going to shift it a little bit just to get actually get rid of a little bit of the pixels, just to kind of get harder edges. And I might just go in and clean up some of these edges here. I'm basically just using the same uh, selection tool that I was using earlier. You just can't really see it as well, but it's basically doing exactly the same thing. So I just kind of want to get a nice sharp edge there. I think that's going pretty well. And I have a pretty small brush just to make sure I can be as fine-tuned as possible. And I'm really just using a mouse with this. If I had like a tablet or something, it might be a little bit easier. But you can do it with a mouse if you need to. So um, I think that's looking pretty good. Once we end up you know, pulling this effect off and stuff, it'll blend pretty well. So you don't have to be absolutely perfect, but I do want to get it as close as I can initially. And I think that's looking pretty good. So. I think once I clean up this bottom edge here, 
we'll be good to go. Something like that. Okay, let me just pull out a second. I think that looks good. And uh, let's hit OK. So now I need to uh, right click on this and say Layer via Copy. And now if I disable this, you can see I have my selection here. And it looks not too bad. I think I can live with that. Yeah, we'll go with that. That'll look pretty good. Okay. All right, so now what we want to do is kind of do the opposite. And we want to get rid of this hand from the background. So the first thing I want to do, I'm going to rename this as Originals, just so I always have an original copy. I'm going to duplicate that and rasterize it so now I can make a selection of it and use something else. And I'm going to call this um, Content Aware Fill because we're going to be using the Content Aware Fill tool to get rid of as much of this uh, phone in hand as we can. So I'm going to use this selection that I already copied here. So I'm going to command click on this to make the selection and then come down to this layer. I'm going to go to Edit, Fill, and I'm going to choose uh, Content Aware Fill. And um, I'm just going to hit OK and see what happens. And so you can see it did a pretty good job of actually getting rid of uh, most of the hand and the phone. There's still some here. And there's these edges we need to clean up. But it's you know done a pretty good job. And since this is going to be mostly in front of that, um, I just really need to deal with these edges and try to get things a little bit better. So I'm going to choose my uh, lasso tool and just start lassoing around some of these uh, edges here. And the closer you get, usually the better it kind of does it making this happen. And so I'm going to do the exact same thing and go to Edit, Fill, and do the Content Aware Fill. And hopefully it's going to start you know, filling in some of these gaps. And you know, as I get closer to the edges, you can also use Shift F5 to get right to that. And so, you know, it's not actually doing too bad of a job. And so I'm just going to try to do this as quickly as I can. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can see now that the hand's over, you can't really even tell. I might even, you know, just grab right there, try that, just to kind of smooth it out a bit. And obviously over here we need to work on that. Sometimes if you have the foreground in front of it, it can be helpful to see what you need to fix and what you don't. That's looking pretty good. We still need to try to get rid of this as much as possible. And it just doesn't want to do it. So sometimes you just kind of have to keep plugging away at it. And sometimes you might need to use a different tool, like say, like the Content Aware Fill tool. You can uh, choose, oops, I need to do the exact opposite of what I just did. So once the spinny ball of death is gone, I can you know choose something like this pull it over here and hit enter and it's going to kind of fill it over like that. And I might do the same thing like over here, do that. And I think that's looking pretty good. And you can kind of just see what exactly is happening. I might do the lasso tool around here one more time and do the content aware fill. And that's looking pretty good. And once we get all the dissolve stuff going, you're not even really going to be telling that there's anything a miss here behind. So I th you can play with it as much as you want to. I think I'm going to call it good for right now and we will move on. All right, so now is when the fun part begins where we can start destroying stuff and just making this look like it's dissolving into oblivion. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to call this decay because I'm going to be basically destroying this layer and I'm going to duplicate it and call this one liquify because we're going to be doing something with that in a little bit and I'll just disable it. Um, I'm also going to get rid of both of these layers just to so kind of see what I'm actually destroying. So I'm going to add a mask to this and I'm going to be using some spatter brushes to really give this kind of that dissolvey, decay kind of look. So um, the brushes I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using from Kyle T. Webster. If you use uh, Photoshop, you can get these for free by going to this little icon here, say get more brushes. It'll take you to the Cal T. Webster Photoshop brush page and there's tons of different packs you can download. I would recommend downloading them all because they're all awesome. But the one we're using is Spatter and so be sure to download that, install it, and then we can get going. Okay, so I'm going to start with, um, let's try this uh, dots right here. I'm going to be maybe making it like 100 pixels big or something like that. And I'm going to be adjusting the brush size as we go along. And so I kind of just want to start, um, you know, kind of erasing 
along this edge over here and you can kind of see I'm just kind of just roughly doing this and just more towards the outside edge and then less towards the inside edge and I might be I'm going to be using some different brushes too just to kind of give it some variation I can make it bigger to get more of an effect smaller I'm using the left and right brackets to change the size as I'm going along let's maybe try a different brush let's try this uh, um, let's try this uh, um, Let's try this landscape one, see what that looks like. That might be too big. So I'll just bring it down a bit and then get more coverage with that to kind of get more of this hand and stuff uh, going. Bring it down to get more. And if you just kind of click, you can get more variation as you're going along. So it's not just doing it all at once. And so that's really kind of just the name of the game is just kind of getting as much variation and randomness as you can as you're going through it. That's looking pretty good. Let's maybe try a different one. Um, Let's try this, uh, let's see, maybe the spatter bot. Go in there and yeah, we're getting some different looks here. So I'm just you know, kind of experimenting and trying different things. And I just wanna get as much of, you know, get a, as much of a random look as possible, make it look like it's actually breaking apart. And we're gonna be adding some more stuff in as we go along, taking some more stuff out. So. Um, and since we're using masks, we can always go back and fix things and change things up. So it's not crucial. You have to be perfect on your first foray into this. And so I think we'll try something like that. I think that's looking pretty good. And maybe we'll go back to that original. Let's try this dusty bits. And this one I know is pretty small. So I'm just going to kind of go in and just add some really light ones here. So it looks like it's just starting to break up over there. And so I think that's looking pretty good. My computer fan is not liking what I'm doing because it's really complex stuff, but that is okay. That's what the robots are supposed to do. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. I could go in and tweak this forever, but we'll keep moving on. All right, so let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. It's starting to break up, and once we get some more dust in there, we'll be good to go. Okay, so now we're gonna go to this uh, next layer. I'm gonna get rid of, or disable that decay. And so now we want to use is the liquify tool. So if you go to filter, liquify, it'll bring up this kind of dialogue panel here. And um, what you want to do is kind of get, you know, kind of an in-between big brush. Maybe start with a bigger brush and then go in and modify things. You want to use uh, the forward warp tool probably. And we're just going to start kind of dragging this over here um, because we're going to be using this as like a mask for our dust to kind of get the colors and the overall flow and shape and stuff like that and so I'm just kind of start dragging stuff over like this and just really messing it up and so it's kind of actually kind of fun to play with and so I'm just dragging it out and you know going back and forth and things like that and you want to go out pretty far although maybe not all the way it kind of just depends on what you're going for Something like that, maybe. It's looking pretty good. And I don't want it to all be even at the end. Um, you know, stuff like that. Now maybe I'll go back, make a smaller brush, and just kind of go back in and just start, you know, messing around with it a little bit more, just so it's not all perfect. And you know, maybe pull some of it in, pull some of it back out. You can change uh, how dense it is if you want to, how much of an effect it makes. Uh, how much pressure it puts on it, all that kind of stuff. So it's just kind of fun to play with and you can twist it, bulge it, all kinds of things. So there's just a lot you can play around with it and you just want to kind of, you don't want it to be perfect because you don't want it to look like it's basically the same thing just over here, but you also want it to have some continuity so you have some of the same colors and flow and things like that. So. I think something like this will probably work pretty well. I don't want to overextend the length of this tutorial. So I think we will try that and say, okay. Okay, so now that obviously doesn't look like anything, but we're gonna be using this as basically a clipping mask for a dust layer. So what I'm gonna do is create a new layer down here and I might just go ahead and group this because I might have multiple layers of dust. And so I'll just call this dust. 
and then I'm going to right click on this and say uh, create clipping mask and now you're not going to see anything because basically this is saying use this as a mask for whatever is on this layer and so um, I'm going to bring up my decay brush or decay layer here make sure this layer is selected and it doesn't really matter what color my brush is I'm just going to start brushing out you can see I'm starting to get dust here and it's taking on the colors of that liquify layer which is exactly what I want and so this is perfect and so I'm just going to start you know brushing in stuff here and I'm using some pretty fine ones here I might you know increase the layer size just to get some variation going on maybe make it smaller make it bigger all kinds of stuff you know I just kind of want I maybe want bigger pieces towards the edge over here and smaller pieces as it fades off into the distance and so you just kind of want to, you know, a lot of variation, all that kind of stuff. Maybe I'll get a different brush here. Let's try this dots layer. Yeah, that might be too big. So let's make this a little bit smaller. Maybe some, you know, bigger ones over here. Some single clicks as we go through over here. Make it really small as we come out over here. And you just kind of want to, you know, play around with it, experiment till you get something that looks cool. And you know, we're getting a fun kind of look pretty cool. That's pretty cool here. So um maybe I'll try this landscape one, just get some bigger pieces. Maybe make it a little smaller. You know, maybe it looks like it's shattering apart right here. That's kind of cool. And then you know, make it a little smaller as it comes over here. Like there's some bigger pieces that made it a little further out. Just kind of whatever you want, you know, just whatever you're looking going for. That might be a little too much right there. And there might be some other spatter brushes you might want to play around with. Like you could try this spatter bot again. And uh, you know, make it a little smaller. Maybe like there's some velocity going on here with some pieces. Like this thing is just really shattering apart. I think that looks pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, and then um, maybe go back to that kind of dusty bits, and we'll just, you know, a few more in there. You can play around with this all day long, but um, yeah. And so you can see we're getting a pretty seamless looking look here from the decay layer to the brush layer. And so we basically did this all with almost just three layers, and it's already looking pretty cool. All right, so we can push this a little bit further. So. Um, I want to, you know, some of the colors didn't quite come through, like the fingers here, not as much of those came out over here. So I'm just going to create another layer. I might just sample that kind of skin color and then maybe just kind of have some of these dust particles uh, with this kind of pink hue going on there. Um, let's do this dots layer and just kind of push them off over there. So it almost looks like, you know, we still have some of that finger there which maybe sounds a little weird, but <laughs> that's okay. It actually is. All right, and so maybe, you know, that works pretty well. We could maybe sample, you know, some of this black color, do some more black dust in here, maybe up over here. Maybe we could swoop it up off to the side, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, maybe sample some of this wood color, grab a different brush. Let's try that uh, landscape. Um, maybe we'll pull it, uh, might be too much, too big, you know, kind of pull it off over there. Like it's almost, it's self shattering. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Maybe we'll get some of this, uh, kind of off white color, which we already think I hit the wrong color. It looks like, here we go. Maybe just put some of it down there. And I think that's looking pretty cool. All right, let's see what we did here. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I might like some of that more pink color again. So um, I might sample that again. Maybe make it a little bit more uh, skin tone-ish. Almost a little more orange. Oops. And we'll just keep adding in some dust. Maybe grab another of this dots, put that in there, and I think we're looking pretty good. Okay, so 
so now we just need to um, call this dust. All right. All right, now let's add in um, some text. And so for this, I just called it dissolve, breaking the addiction. So you know, maybe you're doing a sermon title or something like that. So I'm just gonna write in dissolve. I probably misspelled that accidentally. I did. All right, and I'm using just Montserrat um, bold italic, and I might just make it that kind of really bold yellow or orange. Just kind of make it pop out, and we'll just kind of make it really big, kind of center it up. And now what I want to do is just add a little more dust on top of that, just so we kind of have it look like it's you know actually part of the image. So maybe I'll get that black color. Just start adding in some dust over the layer there, kind of starting from right where our phone starts dissolving out to the end. Maybe we'll grab some of that off-white, do a similar sort of thing. Might be a little too off-white. Let's try that. Yeah, and actually what we could do is we could uh, mask our dissolve layer and um, we could do the same thing with it to make it actually look like it's dissolving as well, which could be kind of fun. So now we have dust on top, and we also have it dissolving itself into the background. Maybe we'll grab that um, landscape one just to get a little more coverage here at the end. So maybe like that starts to dissolve on the edges, something like that. So now we're really kind of getting a more cohesive look, and it's looking pretty cool. Okay, so now just to kind of finish this up, um, let's just call this dust again. Um, maybe you want to do is add you know just a few flares here in the background just for some gratuitous lighting. <laughs> and so um, I do have some flare brushes that I found somewhere. Um, so I'm just gonna grab those. Let's see, maybe grab one with a really uh, high that's really sharp or something like that. I need to make it a little smaller. Um, something like that. Maybe just uh, have it kind of coming off that kind of light right there. And maybe we'll set it to like screen or something. Pretty subtle. Maybe we'll duplicate that. Have it off of that. And then I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of um, just color correction. So I'm going to go to layer and new adjustment layer, black and white. And I'm just going to set this to like soft light and it's just going to kind of really pull in a bunch of punchy contrast. And it's really just going to, I think, help pull everything together. So we'll do that. I think that looks pretty cool. Let's see what else we did. Um, let's do just a quick little gradient map. So if you go to New Adjustment Layer, Gradient Map, and hit OK, um, let's see what I did over here. Kind of looks like a brown to black. And so um, I'll just make this kind of a either brown or dark maroon or something like that. Maybe, yeah, something like that. And we could probably set it to like soft light or something like that, just to kind of bring out those uh, kind of warmer tones, something like that. Let's see what else we could add. Just a quick curves adjustment. A little quick, uh, probably S curves, just to kind of give it a little more punch up in the highs and the lows. Maybe crush the blacks just a tiny bit. And then finally, maybe we'll just add like a, I don't know, maybe a photo filter. Just to kind of warm it up just a tiny bit. And I think we got a pretty good look there. And so you can see pretty easily we create this really cool dissolving image without a whole lot of hassle and it's all kind of editable because I can always go back and you know change up how the liquify works I can move the dust around I can change up the colors and so it's a pretty flexible way of doing this but also pretty easy so I hope this is a really fun tutorial for you hopefully you've learned a lot and uh, go out and just dissolve all your photos into nothingness and oblivion and I will talk to you later